What's good? We're back. We're going to hit the Bears, the Chicago Bears. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you go uh, check out the Packers. We just uh, dropped that maybe yesterday if I'm on my P's and Q's. Uh, so make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Stay up to date. We're going to be hitting the rest of the NFC North here in the coming days. And then we, we've already done the AFC North over on the Patreons. We're about to hit the AFC East over on the Patreons. We'll be back on the YouTubes with the NFC East. So lots of stuff coming down the pipe. Make sure you uh, make sure you hit that noty button. So let's get to the Bears. League worst record, 3-14. and 14. Not good. Surprisingly, the DraftKings have them over under of 7.5 games, which on first look, I'm like, there's no way. But we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, good continuity with the coaching staff. So that's a, a plus here. Let's, let's bring up the show notes here. Matt Eberflus, defensive mind, coming from the Colts in 2021, was their defensive coordinator. Uh, offensive coordinator Luke Hetze is in his second year. He was the quarterback's coach for Getze. Green Bay. Getze? Mm-hmm. What did I say? Oh, Hetze. Hetze. Huh? That G and H are right there next to each other. Luke Getze, duh. Uh, coming over from Green Bay as a quarterback's coach, so I like that he comes from that LaFleur, Shanahan lineage of, of running an offense. So at least uh, at least some synergy going into year two for, for Justin Fields and this team as a whole. Uh, they did put a little bit of an emphasis on O-line this offseason. They drafted Darnell Wright, 10th overall from Tennessee. Haas, he'll slide in at right tackle. Uh, Braxton Jones was actually a, a, a fifth-round rookie in 2022 and due to injuries came in and played every single snap at left tackle. Uh, struggled to start the year, but then started playing well. Uh, the second half coming into his own there. Cody Whitehair will play center. He's moving over from guard. Uh, he's played center before and, and had some success there, more so PFF grades than, than he did at, at guard. Uh, Tevin Jenkins at left tackle uh, has graded out well when, when healthy, but that's, that's what he needs to do is just stay healthy. And then they brought in uh, Nate Davis in free agency from Tennessee, uh, to, to also slide into that offensive line. So some, some improvements there. Uh, if I was just to say, I'd, I'd think they, they had a bad offensive line last year, but it's, a, it's actually not that bad. Um, but when you look at some of the stats, they're first in sacks given up. Justin Fields took 55 sacks. That was the most. Uh, ninth in total pressures allowed. He was first in fumbles. Uh, not that that's on the offensive line, but that's a, um, a product of some of that pressure. But he did have the most time to throw uh, with 3.45 seconds. So he's, he's holding on to the ball for a while. And some of that is out of necessity, being forced out of the pocket. Some of that's just his natural athletic ability to keep plays alive. And obviously with what he did on the ground, it, it's hard to knock him too much for that. But he's got to be able to learn to get the ball out quicker. The line was 16th in pass blocking grade last year and 6th in run blocking grade. So a lot of positives for them to build on. You throw a top 10 pick in there, second tackle taken overall, and, and things are starting to look up for the Bears. But it it, it all falls on Justin Fields. What you got, Katie? I just I feel like teams like that have a situation like the bears with their quarterback and their run game i feel like it's uh i feel like it's harder to go off of some of the grades and some of these things that are given off of because of the way they go about their business on a week-to-week basis like it's really like i think the line played you know better down the stretch uh potentially but still i think wasn't exactly awesome all year so i think some of those numbers might be a little deceiving uh, because of the ability of fields, fields. to run, that's yeah. going to help your. Prob- I'm going to assume that's going to be factored into your run grade efficiency. Must and, be, yeah. You know, I mean, also sacks as well too. Also, they do have the ball all, future Hall of Famer Mon- Montgomery as their running back, so that really helps your uh, <laughs> stats. Key free agent um, loss. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to, you know, m- much with the time to throw and kind of stuff. All those, I feel like all those stats can all get a, a little skewed as well when you have, you know, a mobile guy. Yeah, um, I really thought I was on to something with the time to throw, and then there's a stat of, like, time in the pocket. But it's kind of like you read the legend, and there's, like, the same key for two different stats. and the same Like, they're not the best with letting you know, like, what all these stats are, because especially with, like, quarterback pressures and what they own themselves. So it was hard to, like – they're trying to give you some of that context, but it's, it's pretty hard to find. So if anybody has any advice on how, how to read some of those stats, uh, hit me in the comment section yeah. below. But – the had a lot of time. The creation with him is amazing, and the end result was was shown by breaking rushing records last year. Um, 
Right. But yeah. I mean, he yeah. had an amazing season from it's, the ground. It's the dumb. It's the dumb easy ones. I think that you get upset with Justin Fields on, where it's like, hey, yeah. let's get, instead of running all the time, let's. Just, there's got to be somebody open if you're creating this much time and space and keeping yeah. your eyes downfield. And I don't think it's that he can't be accurate. I think it's just for whatever reason he he does it. He makes the easy ones and or misses some of those easy ones, and then I'll make a ridiculous deep throw right on the money over the shoulder. And it's like you just gotta gotta clean up and take a step forward. Yeah. Really good at that trash, like after ad libbing when the play breaks down, which I think DJ Moore is gonna help with coming in as well. But, you know, crushed it from the from the rushing standpoint. Eleven hundred forty three yards, seven point two yards per attempt, eight touchdowns, thirty eight missed force tackles, seventeen fumbles though. That's like first f- anyone in the league, right? You gotta hold on to the ball, my man. And then from a passing standpoint, 30 uh he was he was the 27th graded passer in the league per pff 34th in completion percentage 31st in adjusted completion percentage 26th in yards to only 23rd in big time throws 17th in yards per attempt and 16th in touchdowns so not a ton of like you know he's got to take a step forward he has to learn how to get rid of the ball quicker read some things take less shots take less sacks not fumble um, not turn the ball over. Did only have 11 interceptions to 17 passing touchdowns, but only 200, two, 2,242 yards uh, over the air. So nothing like amazing. The over-under for him this this season is 2,850, which I think I'm ready to like smash that over uh, because of some of the additions they made. And to hear from all accounts, he's been putting in work uh, over the offseason. He's been, he's been working outside the facility with DJ Moore, with Darnell Mooney, with Cole Komet, uh, with the fourth round uh, Tyler Scott, rookie Tyler Scott. And I read a cool little thing about Tyler Scott. It was like we were on the bus going to some event, and everybody on the, everyone on the bus is on their phone playing around, and he's watching film from practice. And then they get to the end of practice and, and everyone's dreading these wind sprints and he's like, I'm going to win every one of them. And he's going out there like trying to set the example, putting in overtime when he's not at this facility. It seems like he's putting in work. So those are all good qualities and, and, and things you love to hear from a guy who you know needs to take a step forward because the Bears gave him a, a, a vote of confidence. You know, they made a great trade. They didn't take a quarterback at one overall. They could have replaced him. They could have traded him. Instead, they go get like two first, two seconds, and DJ Moore to do it. So really, really bolstered the team up. Still got a, a tackle to help him out with that trading back to nine, and then they actually traded back to ten again to pick up a cheap fourth. But um, I, I like the moves they made in the draft. And then after they took that tackle, they just went straight defense, which I didn't do a ton of research on defense because this is a fantasy show, but not not too much pressure on the quarterback. I don't think there was a single defensive lineman that had more than three sacks. You know. So then a, after they took um, Darnell Wright. They just took nothing but defense. Yeah, well, they had got they, they you know they got rid of Khalil Mack and Roquan Smith, and they, they had been kind of selling off. That's what they were yeah, built they got around. Rid of Robert Quinn and as they, well they too. They just kept kind of moving pieces off of there. So starting in a new direction, Poles is a offensive line guy himself. So that you're putting yeah. some faith in Poles to to say that hey, we can bolster this up and make that better, and you're putting a better situation around Fields. But as far as the the, the receivers, like last year it was Mooney, and you know who else, you know. So right. St. Brown. Now, now you got there. And then, right. He had nobody to pass it to. Right. right. Yeah. And then go, going back to the, you know, the fumbles is like, I think once the cat's out of the bag with, he holds the ball so much guys stop going for sacks and you start trying to poke that ball out. Cause instead of trying to wrangle this guy, let's just try to poke that ball out. And they had a decent amount of success with that. So that's definitely something that you got to clean up uh, moving forward. Fields going at 110, 10th overall, obviously in uh, our, our DFFD ADP QB eight. I think that's, I think that's pretty pop properly rated. I guess you know the question would be: you rather have <laughs> Justin Fields or Deshaun Watson? I'll take Deshaun. Uh, I'll still stick with Fields because of just of the insane rushing upside. Big rushing dude. upside with the with Deshaun too. Not, yeah, not, not I'm, what it is with Fields though. Sure. I think I'm I'm with Fields. Um, over Watson, but I'm with Richardson over both of them. So Whew. that kind of gives you an indication. Over, over Watson too? Yeah, oh yeah. Woo! You did take oh, it yeah, in our last, uh, our last live mock. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna love the rushing upside, you might as well go all in and go A-Rich. 
Yeah, you know. I think I got to get Deshaun as well, but um, I, I you can't go wrong. I love being able to get one of those guys at the end of the first round, start of the yeah, second it's, round. It's you, a, get, you usually get two of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a great problem to have, right? I, I think, you know, you, you touched on a lot of it, but Fields, um, it feels like he's overthinking quite a bit, right? And I think that's where it kind of reminds me of early Russell Wilson, um, his scramble ability, but also his uh, need to pass. And like, he wants to get outside the pocket, which create but then he's holding on the ball, which creates some of those sacks. And you guys kind of touched on all this, but, but I, I feel like from all indications, he's putting in the work, you've seen the dimes that he can throw, you know, the talents there. I, 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 I I'm feeling like it's, this is going to be a pretty big year for fields. Um, I, I feel like he'll solidify that top, you know, top QB, top draft pick um, type, type of thing. Yeah, I like it. Uh, 2850 passing yards over under. I think I'll take the over on that. 18 pass, 18 and a half passing touchdowns. I, I think I'm down to take the over on that too. What did he have last year? I think if Justin Fields is going to stick around and be a thing, he's got to go over all those numbers, right? Yeah. Yeah. 825 rushing yards is the uh, over mm-hmm. under. I feel like that might be the under. Yeah. Yeah. He shouldn't rush for that many, right? He should tone it down a little bit. If he if you're if he's if he's going out there and trying to prove it and and trying to be a little bit more of of what everybody kind of wants him to be, I think that'll be an under number. I think if he defaults back to uh, last year fields, I think that's you know a way over number. But I, I think it's I think it's likely under, and the likelihood that you stay healthy through that amount of rushing again, I think, would be uh, also a, a pretty big feat as well. So. Yeah, uh, large man keeps on weight for a vegan. This is very impressive. Uh, his dad had to go vegan for health reasons back in college, and the Prince whole Fiel- family did it. Prince Fielder was a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Means he ate all the vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, technically Oreos are vegan, so exactly. Um, <laughs> little context always matters. Let's uh, let's take it over to the wide receiver room, right? And the next uh, biggest intriguing part of this Bears team for me, at least, is. They bring in DJ Moore, right? Um, I'm having a tough time with DJ Moore because uh, I like a you slant, you slandered <laughs> him last year. I, I was on DJ Moore for so long, from from his rookie season up to it. And then to start last season, I just had had it with this place. And I was very upset with DJ Moore. And Big Co was on the show and was like, if DJ Wayne's is mad and, does, and wants to sell him for anything – then this is the time you should go buy D.G. Moore. And he was 100% right because it only got better the rest of the season. He, he finished the season pretty strong. And a lot of Twitter facts and stats going around. You know, there's only like six other wide receivers that have had more targets than him in the last two years. He's top six in target share for his team. So, you know, he was the only game in town over there in Carolina. And they ship him out. Um He's got an ADP currently of 69, which is also 6.9. Let me scroll down for the viewers on the YouTubes. Wide receiver 27. Last year he was third in deep targets and fifth in deep receptions. And Fields was 18th in deep attempts and 23rd in completion percentage on those deep throws. So DJ Moore slides in to give the Bears something they didn't have as much of last year, which I, I know down, Mooney is fast and can get down the field, uh, but I think Mooney's probably better suited in that two role. So to have more come in and, and have that lightning fast, big black cat ability to just stretch the field, whew, 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 which he was a Panther, um, to, for him to be able to come in here, it gives a different element to this offense. It gives a little bit more of a game breaking type play, which I, which is why I want to go over on those yards and touchdowns because Moore's going to get behind some defensive backs you know it's just and 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 the, everyone else is still there they 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 obviously Mooney's coming back off a broken ankle uh the reports are that he looks good he, he looks physically good obviously with his shirt off he's been jacked up he's been working out like crazy about to get hit with a PED suspension but that you know hopefully not hopefully <laughs> he figures that out but uh you know I'm feeling some DJ Moore uh over under on him is 800 800 yards he had 888 last year so I don't see how he can go under that I'm ready to go over on the 800 yards hmm. he can no? go under no I don't I mean I'm not I don't think you've gone under on a single total that we've put up here so and that's usually not a great sign uh <laughs> I'm down to go under on the uh, rushing yards and uh, but I just in general, fields. since we've talked about yeah, any of these players, the, uh, I don't think you've gone on an under. On oh, that's not true. Not every single time. Over. 
Um, I definitely want the. He he did he did 888 last night last think, year yeah, like four I, games well, with I Sam mean, Darnold. I, I think it's the well that's those were like his best games. I think right. That's what I'm saying. In four games, he basically had. I think I think it's probably I think at best it's probably a lateral move as far as what. So I think it's you're probably in for about what you got last year with DJ Moore. I don't like unless this offense and Fields really makes a giant step forward and he's the only guy that gets targeted on this team. I think you'll probably see about the same. I mean, but you're still getting a, a low end wide receiver two, higher end wide receiver three. So yeah, I don't mind drafting him. I'm just saying, you know, I don't to say how he <clears throat> could or not could or could not go over under. I think he could be around right around the same. You know what's crazy? Uh, just not off topic, but off topic. DJ Moore is only six months older than than Mooney. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, d- I mean, it just doesn't feel yeah, that way, right? Young. You know, That's like why, yeah, Mooney is, or I mean, sorry, Moore is so young, like in comparison. I mean, he's yeah. what twenty twenty six right now, but just turned twenty six in April. I mean, there's there's so much room there for him to continue to grow not continue for him to start to grow with fields, right? That chemistry, but he's already got some of that pro- professionalism. Sure. So he, he's an interesting uh, prospect for me as far as like, what do you call it earlier? Market share. My market share of DJ Moore is pretty, portfolio. pretty low, you Your know, because I've, I've tra- yeah, my portfolio, I, I've traded him out off um, in a few different, few different uh, spots. But uh, I, I think he's somebody that I, I definitely would uh, start to, to keep an eye on yeah. or maybe make some offers if I'm if I'm rebuilding for sure. Yeah, I don't mind. I have DJ Moore on, I don't know, I probably 50% portfolio share um, <laughs> in seriousness. Um, and I, he's a guy that I don't mind keeping around because it's not it's never been the talent that I'm upset about. Plus, he's always from, like you said, from the jump, when he came into the league, he was super young and the analytical community was, uh, you know, super all over him. enamored with him and they, st- they haven't let it go. Uh, and it's, and it's kept the price up. Um, and he, he has been, you know, he has, he, he's never been bad. You know, he's, he's always been, been good and then good enough in stretches to be like, Oh yeah, DJ Moore is a really good player. Um, and if the bears can take a step forward offensively and he can be, uh, fields his guy, then I think, then I think then, uh, he'll way outperform the ADP, but I, I think it's probably about properly rated. Would you rather have DJ Moore or Traylon? Traylon. Traylon. DJ Moore, Godwin. DJ Moore. Uh, DJ Moore. All right, DJ. Probably Moore. Godwin, but it depends. It depends on my construction. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I. I think they're the right like the same. DJ what do you mean? They're both though? like older, good receivers. You know, like. That's right there with how you want to build. If there was any sort of quarterback I felt good about in with Tampa, Godwin. then I would be Godwin. Big D? Uh, more for me. What about... Give me some more. What about Zay Flowers? Give me some more. I'm doing more there. I'll take Flowers. I'll take Flowers. That's a tough one. Uh, a shiny new object with love and some Zay. Reset, but no, it's more the offense. The I, I, think object. I think Baltimore's offense is changing, and so I, I feel like there's a lot more opportunity for flowers to bloom. Uh-huh. Ooh. Uh, hey, speaking than, of flowers, did you know he turned down several <laughs> six-figure contracts in <laughs> NFL money? Seven. Several and seven are the same thing. No, he said several six-figure contracts. Yeah. Wasn't it seven figures? No, you literally said it 10,000 times. It was six figures. ingrained in all of our brains. Did you know? I'm sure sure it was like eight figures. So like a pop up. Who the hell is getting eight figure deals for nil money? Yeah. Zay, Zay no, Flowers. he's not. Arch Manning. Maybe? Arch Manning isn't even getting that. <laughs> I'm just joshing did, you. Did you know? Pop up video. The more you know. Let's go to Darnell Mooney. All right. Because do it. I can't. I can't stop. I can't stop drafting Darnell Mooney. You can't Mooney. stop looking at shirtless pictures. Of yeah, him. that's it. That's it more than anything else. <laughs> nah, if you've been listening to us at all, I've been all over Dar- Darnell Mooney. Like, I think he was on like one of our first YouTube shorts we ever did back in like January. Like, buy low. You got to get buy low targets, Darnell Mooney, because you know he's only a season removed away from being the wide receiver twenty three. Had over a thousand yards for touchdowns and now he's dropped he's at 144 ADP yeah the value is great that's the end of the 12th round it's uh I think it's 12 times 12 13 1 or is it end of the 12th end of the 12 12 12 12. yep it's 12 square you know your 12 timetables that's impressive that's impressive flashcard champion room 210 (laughs) (laughs) elementary school so that's wide receiver 53 it's 154 on sleeper ADP all day 
And and oftentimes you don't even have to take him right there. But I just feel so good about Darnell Mooney. And, and from all accounts, his work ethic is right there with Justin Fields. And them boys are we've been working all off season yeah, did with you DJ know Moore? that he put on at least 20 pounds of muscle and looks great with his is shirt. that what they said 20 pounds oh i'm just making up a number there's no way it's 20 it looks like a lot he like, was 174 well, it's gonna be 20 pounds with all that semen you're putting on it look at this picture all day <laughs> <laughs> call me um it's gonna un- unfold that picture it's gonna go <laughs> <laughs> no one prints out pictures okay <laughs> Yeah. You might. You might in this scenario. <laughs> who has a printer? <laughs> That's a great And if point. you have a printer, who has ink for it? Like, well, it's not It's not even ink. It's whose works. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Fucking PC load letter. Right. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out to the office. So I'm all over office Sedano space. Mooney. I got, I got nothing else. Oh, right. Office space. Uh, I got nothing else on Mooney. Claypool, you know, 205 ADP. That's 18th round. As much as I hate Claypool, that's free Claypool. So I mean, he's the top five in the league. It's Claypool, three, Claypool, Claypool, three. Claypool. Top three. <laughs> he was top three in the league. <laughs> top three in the league. <laughs> they have. I when I searched Chicago Bears to start this, I was like, let me just let me just read some stuff on on the internet. And it was all about uh, everyone questioning Chase Claypool's work ethic and motivation. And he was like, no, I went and did this. Uh, went and did this charity thing in london for these kids no one talks about that because it doesn't fit your narrative and it's like shut up chase claypool why don't you just do something on the field uh they spent the fucking second first pick of the second round on this dude bust terrible pick terrible trade right there but he had but he did have that one game where he caught four touchdowns yeah he's three years ago season. um but you know for 18th round he has the pedigree and you know he couldn't have any more motivation because this is pretty much it for him like he's yeah if he doesn't perform this year, he's probably going to die in the NFL. So it's, uh, no, it's time. But, but he can hang on as a team's wide receiver three or four, and he'll just hang on to a roster. But he'll he's die not, in fantasy. He's, exactly. He's not fantasy relevant. But 18th round, talk about some value that could go up. It doesn't take much to go from the 18th round. Yeah, so. and, and for them, it's more surrounding fields with viable for options. For sure. Right, yeah. right, so. right. I think he only had 14 catches for 140 yards or something like that in seven appearances yeah. after getting That's, traded. That, Plus, it gives him a big target. That's 10. Well. 10? You that's got that 10. math? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Uh, one last receiver that I should throw out there, Tyler Scott. I mentioned, you mentioned him earlier. Uh, I couldn't think of his name. You brought him up. Uh, getting some love this offseason for, I think he was like running second teams and OTAs, worked his way up to the first team in veteran mini camp, even though he's a rookie. rookie. So um, they took him in like in the fourth round or something, I believe. Yep. Third round. round. Third round. I oh, believe. third round. No. I got it right there on the, the fourth sheet. round. 133. Nailed it. I think I might be falling to some compensatories. Based on the math? No. <laughs> you got your 32 some, times some, tables sometimes down? Sometimes the math is wrong on those because there's more picks in rounds because they have compensatory picks in those rounds. Uh, You know what? You're right. I don't think it, I was getting this. I was getting this from ESPN, and I think the compensatories like do they start in the fourth round? No, they start in the third round. It's close. Third. It's going to be close. Yep. All right. Anyways, says fourth round pick. So he's uh, great, Scott. I don't know anything about the guy, but he's no. getting some hype and some love, and he doesn't have an ADP. So if you got a deep league, I'm down to scoop him up, see what happens. You cut him if nothing, if nothing comes of it. Um, but I think I, all these bears are cheap, and I like getting them. I don't know why. I, I almost have to like pick which ones I want to get because I don't want too many of them just in case. But I find Ooh. myself buying into this offense for whatever reason because they're just they hang around and they're round uh, four pick thirty one is the exact. So not a compensatory. Not pick. a compensatory pick, and almost so a damn fifth right. round pick, more fifth than third. Fifth. I think that's enough for the wide receivers. Let's go to the running backs. I don't have a clue what to do with this backfield. Uh, there's no betting odds for rushing yards of any of them. There's no, like, they're not even trying to figure it out in Vegas. Uh, they bring in Dante Foreman, obviously, from the Panthers. Well, you know, right with the, all the odds, they're going to throw out the guys who will draw the most attention right now to the bigger guys. So that, you know, they're not going to throw up those right now and put themselves in a volatile position. Well, the, why, yeah, why would they? Because they don't know who's going to lead this backfield. They got Khalil Herbert coming in who played – pretty decent at times last year and people were clamoring for him to take over montgomery we were montgomery fans over here for the most part very efficient they draft roshan johnson to throw into the mix so you know from what i looking at like lafleur and shanahan they like a stable they like a rotation i don't know who's gonna be the one 
to get the bulk of the work. I'm not super interested in Dante Foreman, but I oh, guess he Dante has Foreman's kinda, the only one I'm interested in because he's, he's later way ADP. later than all those guys, and he could easily lead that backfield. Yeah, it's 186 is his ADP. Khalil Herbert's 142, and Roshan's first. I don't know. He's not going to be the long term answer, but he's got a one year deal, and he's been good since he came back. Um, so you're not interested in Khalil Herbert and Roshan in that? Uh, I'm not not interested 10th, in them. Eleventh round. I just area. I, I don't think I've drafted Roshan one time. I don't mind. I Roshan. haven't drafted him in a startup yet because he keeps going yeah it just seems like it's too early yeah he does seem like I, he's going earlier in startups where i don't where like it and be. then you know at khalil herbert would 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 be all right with me i'm not i'm not upset about that 12 you three could get, you could get uh you could take one of those guys and then still get foreman and have two of the three well that's you know with a rotation like that that's usually my plan if i if i would get herbert i would try to get foreman uh i'd I'd definitely just take the cheapest options out of all those because i just feel like nobody really knows and roshan could be awesome and i'm not a roshan hater by any means but my thing with roshan is i think he's going to play third down so that seems to be the target i'm looking for is to get the third down passing work yeah i don't know how much you get into that from fields but it would be behoove him to do that those boys that like to run don't like to dump it down yeah because you can just skeet upfield for three to skeet, four or skeet, five skeet, yards, skeet, skeet. potentially 75 yards. So <laughs> uh, that's that's why they do that. But I don't know what to do. I'm kind of – I haven't drafted any of them in any draft this offseason, any of these mocks, because I just – I don't know. They got a good – they got a decent run-blocking line, and the quarterback puts this pressure on the defense, and there's been good success in the past. So it seems like there's there could be something there. Yeah, that's but, that's why for me I'm gonna just I'm fine with taking the cheapest two options or the just the cheapest third option and which is usually Foreman, and I know long term that's not great, but once I'm the way I'm building a lot of the times I'm just stabbing on these later running backs and Foreman's a guy who could see a decent amount of grab a hold of some decent amount of opportunity, um, but now for me it would be Herbert and Foreman and then I I'm probably just not fucking with Roshan I'll, I'll if Roshan becomes a thing I'll trade for if Roshan comes out and he's crushing I have no problem paying up for what Roshan you know if he's looking good but uh, he's one of those guys where I'm Miami gonna take the wait good. and see yeah yeah. I think if I'm if I'm taking risk on on the Bears I'm going it I'm doing it in the running back room not in their wide receiver room <clears throat> you know last year they were I think third in rushing attempts uh per game um so it tells me opportunities there and like you said I'm I like Foreman. I like I like Herbert. I, I don't know about Roshan either because um, they also brought in uh, Travis Homer, who's a pass blocking specialist. So I'm not sure about the third down because he can also do a little bit of catching as well. So so for me, I, yeah, I'm looking at at late round Foreman. I'm looking at throwing some thirds out, seeing what I can get if I if, you know if I have an established team and yeah. and and that's where I'm going to take the risk on the Bears is is in the rushing uh, in the running back room. Right. I think that's a good call. I I I, I feel you. Uh, I I would. I I've been throwing this out there a little bit. I think Roshan not playing the position a ton either, coming in as a quarterback and then switching to running back. I think you come into the NFL and it might be you know, again, a big switch from the only you've only played a little bit of this position in college. Um, so I, there could be a, a bit of a of a learning curve for him to really feel comfortable in this offense where there, you know, could be an additional buy window. Maybe he comes in and just tears it up, but just my logic there, there, there could potentially be, could be the Foreman Herbert show with a little bit of Roshan and Homer mixed in. Um, and then, you know, maybe we see a bonehead play or two from Roshan and it sets him back, or maybe he comes out and shows just is, is undeniable. Um, and then, you know, then I'll buy in. So apparently he was impressive at, Bears rookie minicamp. Yeah, I don't think they've seen somebody who was unimpressive at yeah, that yeah. minicamp. Kind of like me <laughs> taking the over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> just search for Sean Johnson news. That's what I'm looking at. We're gonna need a little. We're gonna need to work a little harder. Uh, Cole Komet or Evan Ingram? Evan Ingram. It's not even close. Not even close. No way. All day. All day. Yeah. On no. a one year deal with the Jags, kind of old, but Neither. a little young Komet. Neither. Give me Evan Ingram. Dalton Schultz or Cole Komet? Schultz. Schultz. You just hate all day Komet because he got you. Has nothing in the to face. do. Like I like Cole Komet. I just. I I think I'd rather have Komet than than Ingram. All of a sudden but you got you got a decent amount of options, over there. They're not going to be a super. Help open I think up that I, seam. super pass. I think your I think your definition of the word decent is a bit stretched there with the Bears pass casting pass catching uh, options. Your three wide receivers are now Mooney, who I like a lot. You have 
DJ Moore, who's a, can be a one, that's should it. be and a it, one. It ends there. And then, it, you, it, and it then your there. third is Claypool, which if your third is Claypool, there. that's fine. It ends there. And then you're bringing in Tyler Scott, who's a 4-4 guy, got some good speed. They have some other guys on that roster that are probably holdovers from last year. I, then you have Big Bobby T. Tunyon's a good tight end as well. So, like... It's not a. It's not about. I don't hate Komet at all. I think Komet's a good player. I'm just, and I'll take Komet. He just has to be at the right price. There's zero percent chance that you could take Cole Komet over Evan Ingram. Over Evan Ingram was like tight end six last year. Like, mm-hmm. I, take up that one game, and I would love to see where Evan, Evan Ingram was at. Regardless, but Evan, Evan, think- those are just one guy's plays receiver basically, and the other guy's you know a white tight end. They're not that well, far off in the- ADP. It's about a half a round, so it's not like crazy. Yeah, I mean, Evan I think Ingram. the other side of it is is the I mean, when we're talking about Evan Ingram, we're also talking about the Jaguars' offense. Right. And again, I, I'm not going to gamble on pass catchers on the Bears. I, I'm, you know, I would gamble on pass catchers on the Jaguars over the Bears, right? As as a as a rule of thumb. And so, um, if it's not a running back, I don't think I'm gambling on it. Um, and that's why I think Komet is was a it was a nice safety pin but it, again i think that fields is trying to evolve and i think that they're going to open up the offense a little bit with the with what they brought in and still rely on that run so that's where i feel like it's really hard for me to get on the commit train again just just because of that i'll take those whichever both of them by the way hmm. i think i gotta commit what are you doing with laporte are you taking laporte over commit i gotta yeah. gotta get that shiny new Please, what do you mean laporte is like a first round pick and borderline first round pick and tight end premium which is what we're always talking about you couldn't get a second if you had to for Google Matt. no definitely not all right uh all right last but not least so the seven and a half over under what do you guys think about that i was gonna be like there's no way that right cole commit 11 5 6 adp is fucking hogwash there's no chance i would ever would you ever, rather have would you rather have ever. chigger I, I would rather have every player on that board instead of cole commit probably the next two rounds Chig, yes, a hundred percent. Dulcich, yes, a hundred percent. I know you, then McBride. I know you're going to say that. Oh, I mean, that's not even a question. Uh, Musgrave. I'd probably lean I, Musgrave. I'll take Musgrave, sure. Jeez, bunch of haters. So mad at Kakol Komet. I'm not I mad think, at him I at think, all. I think this the whole situation evolved. The whole reason you liked Cole Komet last year was because he was potentially their wide receiver too, and he still mm-hmm. couldn't fucking really blossom into anything awesome. Like so, no, so now what? He's your fourth option, and then if if you can if he if he actually starts checking it down to running backs, like he's your fifth. I don't option. see that happening, and I think this. I think it opens up. It doesn't put as much pressure on him to be the wide receiver too. I don't give. There's good nothing, in the there's nothing that it opens up enough in that vol in the amount of passing volume that's going to go on there how many yards did they have justin fields pegged that for over under yardage 3300 i think it was less or 2800 than yeah exactly you know the bears are the only team in the nfl to have a four thousand yard passer yeah but i took the over so it's, it's a done deal <laughs> yeah uh, uh for those for those betting at home take the under and I, for the for the record, I think the Bears will. Evolve. I think the whole thing does evolve a little bit. I don't think it's like a huge step where they're winning the division, uh, but I think I think that you will see you know a step forward from everything. I think it will look a whole lot better week in week out from Chicago. Uh, it's, it's not negative Chicago at all. Uh, just so seven and a half wins. I was I was wanting the, to take the under, but they they have Tampa Bay, Washington, Las Vegas, New Orleans, Carolina, Arizona, Atlanta. To go with all the division games, like there's, I think your defense is still volatile enough. You got a good defensive coach, but I think you're just get, they're going to kind of wax and wane enough. And I don't know that the offense will be quite potent enough to overcome some of those games where they're not the defense isn't playing good. So I'm fine with the under. And some of the, a lot of those games are probably coin flips on the mm-hmm. shitty teams. Well, they're a shitty team, so at best, but. It's not like I would say they're a mediocre team at best. I wouldn't call them. Yeah, shit I, I, at best. I'll, I'll give them mediocre. The Bears. Yeah, I would give them seven wins. After but being I'm taking the, the last seven team a good in number. the league. So I, yeah, I think they're closer to shitty than mediocre to me. But but I think they're right in the middle of that. And I, I do think they're going to your back, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it is what it is, man. I mean, I, I I think the offense can definitely improve. I think you were right on the defense. I think there's they're spotty at best and. And it's a tough division. I mean, uh, you know, uh, division play is tough no matter what division it is. But you know who else could be coming after you? Nick Whalen. And if that guy comes after you, you are in oh, trouble. Yeah, I'm over. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Did you know he was a coach? Lies, lies. 
<laughs> yeah, he's a fucking life coach. Oh, those are the worst. Well, he was really what good a at, sham profession. He really, he's really good at, at Spartan racing. So, <laughs> well, he's top three, I think. Uh, and, and, and his age, age, his age. age range. <laughs> All right, let's get the FF out of here and over to the Vikes. 